Hey everyone, welcome to today's Security Flash. Uh, my name is Casey Ellis. I'm the founder, chairman, and CTO of Bug Crowd, and I'm joined today by Adam Foster, aka Evil Damon. Hey, say I'm hello, Evil Adam. Damon. Um, I'm one of the ACs of Bug Crowd, and uh, I've been looking into this exploit quite a bit at the moment. For sure. So what we're going to talk about today is is the uh, Apache uh, CVE 2021 uh, 41773 is is the de designation uh, under under CVE. Um, and it's it's a vulnerability in Apache. So, you know, first question, Adam, is uh, what year is this? It's definitely not the 90s, even though Frack just came out with a new issue. Um, but it's a really weird vulnerability. It's, it's the classic, ah, let's path traverse using percent %2e. Um, it's a very old style bug. It's very common. And basically what you can do is you can read files from the local file system on the server you're running. Um, mm. In certain misconfigurations, that can be all files, but in most misconfigurations for this, it's certain files in the web root. Got it. So when you're saying misconfigurations, is this um, a vulnerability in the software itself, or is it is it you know dependent on how uh, Apache is implemented in a, in a specific server? So it does require some minor changes in the server. So you need to change it slightly, but in a standard catch-all field, it's probably going to affect you, um, at least to read the web root and the files inside of there. Um, the big one here, though, is that if you misconfigure this, which is a pretty common misconfiguration, mm. it will allow you to read all files on there. Right. But Good. let me preface with this is not going to melt the world. <laughs> yeah, Nothing I was going to ask, like, yeah, in, in terms of the overall, you know, kind of risk to the internet that this thing, thing causes, um, you know, Apache's one of the most popular web server, um, you know, pieces of software out there. Uh, so the idea of there being a vulnerability like this in, in Apache itself um, can definitely be cause for concern. But, you know, what, what's your view on, on how much risk we're actually out from this thing? The problem here is that this vulnerability appeared between releases. Um, so there was a release for uh, version 4.9 and then there's version 5.0. Um, 4.9 is the one that where this appeared it was a patch for an existing vulnerability so they were trying to fix a vulnerability made another vulnerability and it was immediately patched after that Right. so it's only between these two versions and before that you're fine, there's no issue with that though you're hit with every other vulnerability under the sun yeah, so you're fine from this one, but probably not fine from from other things if if you're running a yeah. previous version. It's kind of what you're saying there. Got it. So, yeah, I mean, anything anything kind of specific, you know, interesting around the backstory on this one. You mentioned, um, you know, there was some some work done to actually escalate it to RCE. Yeah. So this was originally first off reported by the cPanel team. So the yep. cPanel security team started posting this to the Apache team. The reason why they posted it was they found it was being actively exploited at the time. Um, and at that time, it was only the local file inclusion that was being exploited. But now there have been a couple of people on Twitter who's found if you have certain weird configurations, which again, it's a situation of it's more common than less, mm. uh, you can get remote code execution on that server as well. Got it, got it. So, which so is the, bad. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's, I mean, we talked about, you know, there's the needing to be specific configurations for the, uh, the the file include in the first place. And this is, I guess, another set of potential configurations on top of that, that would be required for, for RCE to be achievable. But that's a thing that can happen. That's kind of what yeah. you're saying. Yeah? That's exactly it. Got it. Got it. So, you know, for, for folks that are running Apache, um, I, I just looked this up as we're talking. Uh, apparently it runs 30.9% of the internet at this point in time. That's as of October. Uh, 2021. So that's that's a recent scan um, out of uh, w3text.com. Um, so there's a lot of it out there, you know, for, for organizations that, that know that they've got Apache in their environment or ones that, you know, potentially are concerned about the possibility of that, um, you know, systems that are outside of their existing vulnerability management program, so on. What's What's your advice for them at this point in time? There's public patches available. You can patch this right now. There's going to be very little difference between the two versions. Um, it's mainly just a security fix. There are some people saying you can just disable the required all denied uh, configuration, but that won't patch this issue. It will only 
prevent it from triggering in certain circumstances. You're still vulnerable to the file read. It just won't cover the entire system. It'll only cover what Apache shows to people. Got it, right. At this point, so, you may as well just upgrade your Apache. Yeah, I mean, if, in terms of backwards compatibility, is there anything happening ar ar around that? Like, you know, people applying the patch and, and having difficulty with regression or is it fairly straightforward? So there's no changes here. That's the big part. It's a very direct change, what they've done. Um, it's only meant to patch this one or two issues that came through in this last version. So there'll be no backwards compatibility issues going forward for that. Got it, got it. Very cool. So, um, you know, you mentioned as well when we were talking beforehand that, uh, you know, there, there have been kind of modules released for the scanning tools. Um, I guess, what's your advice to to bounty hunters and, and people that are looking for this issue uh, on an offensive basis? If you're looking for this, um, there are some versions um, publicly available, such as Nuclei templates, very commonly available. Um, you're going to have to configure it a little bit. Um, the Nuclei templates that are currently publicly available uh, don't cover all of the edge cases for this. Right. Um, they always try to read a direct file from uh, the disk that you normally shouldn't be able to access. Try accessing things that would normally be accessible in the web route, such as trying to read local files that would maybe be forbidden, such as ENV files. If you're a defender though, you can usually check what version of Apache you're running. Um, the host header is all is pretty much always shown. Um, do a scan anyway. Even if you don't think you have it, you might have it. Um, it. So, and, so literally, literally banner grabbing across your entire environment is, is probably not a bad way to figure out where this thing might exist. That's exactly it. Having good asset visibility is really important here. Knowing what version is running because it does have a pretty high impact if it actually does mess up. The other part is look in your Docker containers for when they were built recently. So if you've got newer Docker containers, have a look there because those are probably pulling that version from before if they were recently spun up. Awesome. Would you expect to see this, um, you know, we're talking and I guess most of how I've been thinking as we've discussed patching and all that is, uh, is focused on servers and, and kind of, you know, general compute. Um, instances of Apache, but you see it a lot in, in you know, network equipment, like routers, IoT, um, all sorts of different places like that. So is that you know, potentially in scope for, for risk here? Yes and no. I think the problem more there is going to be, they're so out of date, you won't even notice it for this stuff half the time. Mm -hmm. Most of them are still running BusyBox from 20 years ago, let's be honest. Um, but I don't think you're going to see a lot of um, IoT devices or other embedded devices that are running this recent version as it was only released for a couple of months. Yeah, sure. If you've got something that's that new, it's probably worth checking. But most of the time, the hardware running here probably won't be running it. Not a, not a massive consideration. Okay, that's, that's good to hear. Anything else you wanted to, uh, you wanted to add or, or color in around this particular issue? Not hugely. Um, the only other thing is that it's already being exploited in the wild. Due to the fact that it's very easy to template, it's worth spending time and having a look as well if you're in a defender role to have a look and see if it's already being exploited in your system. Consider that everything, anything that is already existing and vulnerable has probably been attacked and probably run IR as soon as you can. Yeah, okay, for sure. And I actually forgot to ask that question. So in terms of what we're seeing come through the BugCrowd platform, is, is there has that been ramping up? Like what are we seeing in terms of you know hunters looking for this issue and finding it, but also the, the presence of it? Well, I don't have numbers directly on me, but I have seen this pop through a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So this is being actively scanned for, people are finding this now, and it's probably going to continue being found because a lot of CI, CD pipelines are not being built to the latest versions, they're being built to older versions or were built on the older versions, and they haven't been upgraded yet. Awesome. Well, those are some really handy tips. Um, Yep, 30.9% of the internet, we're going to be looking for this thing and, and patching it for, for a while to come, as tends to be the case with, with software like Apache. Um, but, you know, thank you for kind of coloring in the mitigations. I think some of those uh, call outs, you know, around like Docker and, and CI CD pipelines potentially reintroducing the issue. That's a that's a really important caveat um, and, a, and a pretty cool tip that you threw in there. So I appreciate that. Uh, and we'll, we'll wrap it there. Thanks for your time, Adam. Appreciate it. No problem. Always happy to. Cheers.
See you later.